So we're testing out lives. Hello. Thinking about doing lives on Thursdays from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I would like to figure out though, how can I do it this way? This is kind of a locked orientation. It's uh, wanting me to do it vertical and I kind of wanted to do it horizontal. So basically the idea is gonna be uh, Thursdays, like I said, from two to three Eastern Standard. I would like to start trying to do some lives and it would just be like a sew with me kind of thing. So I'll have it scheduled. Um, I've actually, I've been planning this for a while. Hi everybody, I see your hellos. I've been planning this for a while. So I finally gotten to the point where my calendar, when I look at it, like I'm two to three on Thursdays is open and it's set aside for this. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna see if I can figure this out. I'm getting so many hellos. I did not know if anybody was gonna jump on here. Cause like I said in the title, this is my first live. So you guys are here for the technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Arielin. I hope I said that right. I'm your first live watch. Well, awesome. We will fumble this thing together, right? We'll, we'll get through this together. So, um, yeah. So, basically, my title says it all. This is my first live stream for those of you hopping on. I cannot believe there's already like 50 some of you. I really thought it would be crickets. Hey, Terry, my bestie, my BST bestie, Terry. Um, hi, no average girl. I'm just blown away, guys. I really thought there would be like maybe two people here that could tell me like, can you see my screen? You know, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically, Susanna, hello. I'm basically like, trying to figure out if I've got this right. So let's see. Can you take, make a video when we take in too much of the zipper all the way to the bottom of the hem lined, please. Hi, Joanne. I'm glad you're learning. That's awesome. We're all learning. I'm learning about live streaming right now. So, um, somebody just asked a question and that's one thing I need to learn is after I do the live stream, are all these comments going to be something that I can like scroll back and read? Um, because I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, obviously, thank you, Top Cat. Um, obviously, um, oh man, this is going to be tricky seeing these things like while I'm talking. I can't, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Canada, eh? How you doing up there, Bonnie and from Canada? Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys do have video requests, you can always just DM me on Instagram about that. DMing me on Instagram is the best to get to me. Um, so yeah, so for video requests. Obviously, I do have videos planned out for quite a while. We are still in the middle of, oh wow, Indonesia, awesome. Um, we're still in the middle of that produce your own bridal line, right? So I've got, um, I think like four, at least four more videos. And I know things are going slow right now in my uploading process of those. It's just, there's so much to them. So I will tell you, okay, I'm going to ignore the comments just for a minute so I can think clearly, but hello to everyone who is here. Um, my, my format for my live streams, the idea is it'll be kind of like a sew with me for an hour and you can just kind of just watch what I'm doing. It's completely unedited and you can just kind of peek over my shoulder. Um, so there's that. But as far as the, um, ideas that I have for, um, my series about create your own bridal line. Like I said, I've got like four more videos to do. My next one is going to be sourcing the fabrics more for like the skirt. Like I got into the illusion stuff with my last one. Um, but we're going to talk about, obviously you guys know about my lace sources, but we'll talk about a little bit more of that, but more like skirt fabrics and, um, in designing 
skirts and what all goes into um, each shape. So I'm literally going to, because uh, with my bridal sewing studio, I have access to like hundreds of dresses, right? I'm literally just going to kind of like pull them out and hang them up here. And, and I'm just going to kind of like lift the layers of the skirt and show you what all goes into each silhouette. Um, and I think that'll be really helpful. And then I'll talk about the names of the fabrics as well and kind of like what designs do they lend themselves to the best. So uh, we'll get into that with that series. Then after that, I have an interview that I did um, with Points of Measure. Um, I'm super excited about that. We did that interview like seems like a month or two ago, but basically we're talking about like tech packs, um, and what you need to do, um, as far as, um, you know, pattern making tech packs, getting things off to a sewing contractor, all that. We get into the nitty gritty about that. Um, so yeah, sourcing fabrics, uh, points of measure, interview. And then after that, it's going to be a video basically of me draping um, one of my designs. And then the final one is going to be like bringing them to market and, you know, deciding who your market's going to be and how to get them there. So um, that's, that's that series. But this is something else that I'm doing are these lives. I don't know that today I'm going to be able to do two to three because um, I do have somebody stopping by today. And like I said, this is really um, the, the live number one, the struggle bus edition, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, um, figure this out or not. So let me just play here. Let's see. No. Okay. So here are filters. Um, I'm probably not going to play with the filters too much. Sometimes if I need high contrast, I might do something like that, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So obviously most of these are not going to do any good for um, what we do here. I was hoping there would be like a high contrast. You guys know, I'm back to normal here. You guys know that um, I do like to edit on high contrast for my videos and um, that kind of makes everything a little bit more clear. All right, let me see if I push on this comment. Let's see. Chat viewing options. Top chat. Live chat. Super chat. None. All right, let's look at top chat. What happens? Oh, this is how I pull up what you guys say. Awesome. That's what I was saying. I wasn't sure about how to go back and slow it down. It was just popping on my screen. And now I have it um, where I can scroll back. That's awesome. Um, so like I said, I want to figure out how can I do this landscape also. It fusses at me whenever I do that. So um, obviously I was, I was wanting to work on hemming this dress today with you guys. And that's gonna be a little difficult doing it uh, portrait. All right, so let me look at this again. Oh, guys, I don't know if you noticed. Also, I did activate memberships, channel memberships. Yay. Um, actually, I've had the option to do channel memberships for a good long while, and I just haven't done it because I, I just, I was afraid of taking on more than what I could do, you know? Um, but I just activated it. YouTube reached out to me and they kind of gave me an extra little push to do it. So we're, we're doing channel memberships. Um, so you can find that hopefully on my YouTube channel homepage. But I have three different levels. Um, one is like super cheap. I forget what it is, like $2.99 or something a month. Super cheap. Don't hold me to these numbers. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember numbers very well. But that one, you get, like, custom emojis and stuff. So, like, when you leave a comment, I can, um, you can, you can put in, like, custom emojis. And they're, like, sewing themed. So, I thought that'd be a lot of fun. And I even had one that is a Monstera leaf that I thought you guys would like. Because, you know, 
you know how I love my Monstera. So there's that. And then um, another one includes access to live streams like this that are not going to be open to the public. It's going to be more of like a private live stream for members only. Um, so that's super exciting. That costs a little bit more. And then the most expensive tier includes all those other things, but it's also going to include um, consultation time with me one-on-one -on -one, um, through Instagram DMs. So that would be a channel membership level that you sign up for on YouTube, but then you um, you would access me, you'd have guaranteed access to me on Instagram in the DMs. That is my preferred way of communicating, by the way, with sewing questions and whatnot, because I can do voice memos and um, you can send me pictures of your project and we can just shoot sketches back and forth and stuff. So super handy. All right. So I'm going to look at these comments again. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to go back to the beginning. My first comment at 202. Hello from North Central Minnesota. Barb LaFond. Awesome. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi from Philly. Bridal sewing attempts. What a fun name. That's awesome. Um, Bridal sewing attempts, if you're still on here, I wonder if there's a way to know that, if you're still on here. Um, bridal sewing attempts, email me or DM me or something on Instagram, please. I would love to find your channel. What an interesting name. Okay. Tanisha Grant, hello. Hello from Arizona. Let's see. Hello, hello. Florida. Another Minnesota. Okay, here's the one that was a question. Can you please make a video when we take in too much at the zipper? All the way to the bottom of him lined, please. Okay, um, I'm not sure how you say your name. Samara, maybe? Samara, the question about the zipper, please DM me on Instagram. Send me pictures. And guys, when you DM me with questions on Instagram, please do not send me pictures that expire, okay? Okay. You know how you can do like vanish mode or you send a picture and I can view it one time and then it expires. Um, oh, there you are. Samara. Nice. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Anyways, um, I can't help people when they send me pictures that expire because I'm like looking at it and I'm like, oh, okay, like, let me see. Yes. And then it like goes away and then I have nothing to sketch on and I have nothing to refer back to. <laughs> All right, let's see what else here. And I know what you're viewing right now is super boring because obviously I just have my camera set up on a tripod. And like I said, for those just joining, my lives, my intention for my lives is that it's going to be more like a sew with me. So you'll be seeing me sew is typically what this will be. Um, but today, because this is my first live and I'm figuring it all out, that's not what we're doing. I'm just trying to, you know, I've watched videos on how to do a live, but there's nothing the same as just doing it yourself, right? All right, let's see. Joanne Harden, hi, I've learned so much from you. Awesome. Let's see. Already helped me so much. Thanks from the UK. I love my UK people. So many of you guys are in the UK. Also, I have lots of Australia and New Zealand. So my little um, down under friends with their opposite seasons. That's so cool. All right, let's see. Hello, Irene at the Exeter Taylor in New Hampshire. Thank you, Irene. She said, I'm doing great. Am I doing this right? <laughs> Am I doing it right? All right, so I said earlier, I can't believe there's 43 people on here. I thought it was going to be like two. All right, let's see, because I did not announce this. <laughs> That's another thing going forward. I'm going to give you guys an announcement to remind you I'm going live, like on Instagram or whatever. Follow me over on Instagram at bridal sewing, and then I'll put it in the stories to remind you. Um, but ideally, it's going to be set kind of on my calendar like an appointment, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday going live. And today is probably not going to be 
the full hour because again, I'm just fiddling around. This is basically like you showed up early to the concert and they're doing a sound check. That's what this is. <laughs> so if it's boring, I apologize. All right, let's see. JJ Santi, I'm so glad you're doing this for all of us. Thank you. Awesome. So you guys like the idea of this? I like the idea of it. I'm excited. Okay. And then this other name, it looks like a kind of a mashup of names. I'm altering my daughter's wedding dress for ceremony in two months. Congrats. Brave girl. Look at you. Rock on. I've been following you. Well, I hope my videos have helped. A lot of times, guys, um, I do get feedback from people who are like home sewers or hobby sewers, and they're just doing like one dress or, you know, a couple dresses or something, and they just want to watch and learn just for, um, just for that. So that's awesome. You're not alone doing that. Not everybody is here to build a full on bridal sewing business. That is obviously that's kind of like who my channel is marketed to, but so many, so many more people than that. All right, let's see. Middle of nowhere, Nevada. All right. I've been to Nevada. All right. Independence, Missouri. Watching and learning. Awesome. Let's see. Another UK. Hi, Rosalie from Massachusetts. Rosalie is such a cutie, guys. I don't know if you follow her, but I just love her. Let's see. Sherry from New Orleans. Haiti. Hi, from Haiti. Oh my goodness, all of my, um, my mind just went blank. <laughs> Haiti, um, my mind just went blank about um, the type of French that you guys speak. Shoot, I'm drawing a blank. But anyways, I have some friends from Haiti. So I was trying to think of, can I even say hi? <laughs> In French Creole. Is that it? No, I don't know what it's called. I don't remember right now. I'm so overwhelmed with trying to figure out this whole interface. It's not a good time for me to try to remember. I'll have to have a Haitian friend on here to talk and say hello. Um, anyways, let's see. You got a YouTube notification, Monica. Okay, awesome. So YouTube notified you guys. That's cool. So you can look forward to that too on Thursdays um, from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. Again, today, I'm not doing this for a full hour. Um, or I don't expect I am I, because I might have an interruption. So when I get my interruption, I'll have to go. All right, let's see get right to it. That's nice. Yes, I try to get right to it. Rosalie's working on a wedding gown. So yep, we're that's what we're doing. Sonia, I've helped you through two wedding dresses. Oh, from New Zealand. I was getting ready to say, what in the world are you doing awake? Okay, so it's 6 a.m. You poor thing. Grab you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Welcome. Let's see. Plus a joy to listen and watch your videos. Thank you, Sydney. Okay, let's see. North Dakota. Oh, okay, and then the smiley faces for my Haitian friend. Awesome. Tell me, what is the word? Why am I not remembering the type of French that you guys speak? What's the name of that? I, For some reason, I'm only thinking of French Creole, and that's like Louisiana, I think. I think I've got that wrong. But anyways, I'm just going to um, I'm gonna hem this dress a little bit, all right? That's what I'm going to do. Let's see what happens. Um, wondering how am I gonna be able to see the comments when I do it this way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, because I want you guys to have the better camera, right? I don't wanna use my front-facing camera for this. Creole, oh, I'm saying it right, okay. Nice, okay, I can't believe I remembered the word. <laughs> Salt Lake Taylor, nice to have you. So, um, yeah, so I want to use my good camera this way, not the front facing, so I can't see the comments. So I'm going to have to figure something out about that. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work on this hem, and um, I'll just talk you through it while I do it, okay? So the notes that I have on this hem is she wants it a, an inch longer, 
than the floor, so like an inch longer than what I've pinned. This is the center front. You guys remember my setup, right? Like how I hook it like that. Okay, so this is the center front that I'm messing with here. She wants it an inch longer, and we're doing a footprint reduction. So usually when I do that, if their stance is pretty even and the hem amount is the same, right leg, left leg, which a lot of times it's not, but if it is, I just pin center front all the way to the taper in the train, the taper that we go to with our footprint reduction. This is a massive, oh my, oh my. Guys, you're getting you're getting your money's worth today, especially for it being free. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Anyways, um, this is a massive hem, so massive footprint reduction. So what I'm going to do, and you guys have seen this in a video if you watched your, my hemming video for the ball gowns, I'm going to push the crinoline up out of the way. And I'm going to get this dress on the side and connect the side seams and mirror pin it the whole way. And I'm going to cut it layer by layer that way. So the other instruction that I have for this besides an inch longer than the floor, um, reduced footprint, is she wants me just as far as to save money. She wants me to cut through the applique and then after I've cut through, lift off any applique that has been cut into. That way we'll still have a nice organic edge, but she's only paying for me to take off like this much instead of having to lift off this much. But she is a lace lover. So like when we get this from the scraps, I'm going to cut around this applique to make a new applique, and we're going to put that somewhere else on the skirt. She doesn't want to lose her lace, but she doesn't want to pay for me to separate this with my razor. So I think that was an awesome middle-of-the-road choice for her, and I highly recommend hemming it that way. Um, I hope that makes sense. You guys tell me. I'm looking at the comments now. Did that make sense, the way I described that? Let's see... How do you take up from the bottom when you can't take off lace and there's no waste? Um, you would have to send me, Amber, you would have to send me that question in the DMs on Instagram. Send it with a picture because I'm not sure what you mean when you can't take off the lace. Good. Orchid, it absolutely did make sense. Yeah, so I really like this girl's choice. I'm not picking the lace. That would take too long. Cutting right through it. Lifting anything that looks cut severely, has that straight edge, lifting through so she still has the look of the organic edge. And then, so she doesn't lose her lace, she wants all of it, we're going to cut around here to make an applique and put it up elsewhere on the skirt. So that's the plan. So this is the way I'm going to not lose my marks is I'm gonna start with this pongee layer. This fabric right here, you guys know that's called pongee, right? Pongee, hands down, the number one most common lining fabric. And we are gonna talk about that in, um, in the next sourcing video that I have about skirt fabrics and skirt construction. So that's P-O-N-G-E-E, -E, pongee. So, it's got another name, too. What is the name of it? El Dorado? Am I making that up? I need to look that up. All right. So, I'm going to transfer the marks from the safety pins here. And I do have to disconnect my stabilizing tacks. That's a bummer. Because that means we got to put them all back in later. Oh, I can tell now, guys. Lives, you're going to see my personality even more. I can, I can tell. I'm going to act up. All right. So this right here is a hem mark because it's the safety pin. This 
was a stabilizing tack that I did. I definitely wanted to get the train all like laid out perfect and stabilized before I put these pins in to mark the footprint reduction. That way I didn't have one layer kind of shifted. Does that make sense? I hope so. You could mess yourself up if you did not stabilize your layers before you marked your hem for a major footprint reduction such as this. All right, so I don't need this stabilizing pin or tack anymore because I'm separating my layers out and this is gonna be cut off in the end anyways. So I'm pulling that one. Here goes another. Pulling another stabilizing tack. See the stabilizing tack pins are the quilting pins, not the safety pins. The safety pins were marking the hem. All right. Again, I can't see your comments right now, but every few minutes or so, I'm gonna jump over and check them out. That is a stabilizing tack, so. Here we go. This stabilizing tack will maybe be okay to keep. We'll see. All right, so I've got all those marked on the ponji. So now, I think I can get by with cutting these two layers at one time. I think they're gonna be fine. I'm gonna use a safety pin this time instead of quilting pins to mark my hem because quilting pins fall out of the tool so easily. All right, I'm gonna take my mark out and let that just be the top two layers. I think as long as I'm careful in how I nest like the that crux of my shears when I'm cutting, if I'm real careful and nest it in right, I think I can cut the two layers of tulle at one time just fine. Just fine. Okay, well, somebody is speeding. That's another thing. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to this replay and I'll have a better idea of like noises, what causes problems and what doesn't. Just moving and grooving. check the comments real quick. Let's see. Footprint reduction. Um, oh, Rosalie, I was thinking I had a video on that. I'm so glad you asked that because yeah, you guys are going to be in the woods here if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm so glad you said that. All right, so let's picture we're looking at a bride from above, okay? So this is her hem from above. This is the cross section of her waist, very morbid. <laughs> and this is her looking up from above. This is her, the footprint of her dress, her train. So when you hem, you can just hem like this 
right, from side seam to side seam. Or you can taper a little bit, right? Or, particularly if she's petite, she may want to keep her whole length of her train. That's usually normal. But, like, if she's got a train, um, again, if she's petite, or, like, if she's got a train that's kind of like a lily pad shape and it comes out really wide on the sides and she's like, I don't want a busy bustle. I don't want to be tripping all over this dress on the wedding day, that kind of thing. She might want you to hem like this, you know, really kind of bring it in so she doesn't have all this. Usually then they can get by with a single bustle and they can step to the side on the wedding day, which is lovely. They don't have to have all that extra side flare as we talk about there. So that is a footprint reduction. Hmm, this looks like a beetle actually, if you see it <laughs> out of context. <laughs> Does that make sense? You guys please tell me if you have follow-up questions with that let's see and I'll be right back All right, so I'm going to, what I was doing is I was fiddling around with my air. Is my air too loud the way it's set right now? Can you still hear me okay? I know air can be a problem sometimes with audio. Irene, I'm so glad that makes sense. And yes, Rosalie, nice. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I, I like to try to think of um, alternative names for things like um, also known as this, also known as that. But I can't really think of another name. Someone might say narrow the train. I could see somebody saying that, narrow the train. Um, in the comments, guys, if you do this, what do you call it? If you do a footprint reduction or narrow the train, what do you call that? Maybe there's some other name out there that I need to call it. Kind of like the Taylor's tax, right? <laughs> You guys have heard me try to say Taylor Stacks. There's so many different names for it. It's not even funny. Oh, a crochet tack. You know, all the things. A chain tack. All right, now we're back to our last stabilizing tack. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I've got this in three sections. I've got my Ponji layer. I've got this and I've got that. We have already hemmed the crinoline layer. I would not mark all this without hemming the crinoline layer. All right, so I'm gonna go around here and pull up that slip layer out of the way. Let me check the traps, let's see. Yeah, Rosalie, I think your answer that you're giving there about self-taught, that is probably flat out one of the most common answers. Um, has worked under another seamstress at some point or shadowed or observed or whatever. And then a lot of people have done, um, Dee Dee Anderson, you know, they've done her Alterations Academy, or there's others out there too. Hopefully mine is coming up. 
Yay. Give me a thumbs up if you are excited about my e-course. <laughs> I'm really believing 2023 is going to be the year that I'm able to bring, um, bring the e-course out to you guys. So there's that. And then, of course, the the cherry on top, Rosalie, like you're saying, you've taught yourself a lot along the way. And that's, that is so true. Um, especially, I think you'll find as the trends change, um, we all have to figure out new stuff anyways. So whatever we learn to do in the beginning usually is not really enough to see us through our entire career. It's kind of the basis, you know, to get us started and gives us good confidence in what we're doing. But, yay, I see the thumbs up. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, we all have to continue to learn and figure it out. All right, so I'm going to start with the pongee layer. this and hook these together. I just think lives are awesome too because like Rosalie was saying she's just sewing right now and that's the whole thing like I like to listen to stuff while I'm sewing and this would be so easy to just have kind of going in the background while you're sewing and then if I say something that piques your interest you'd be like Oh, wait, what? <laughs> and then look and be like, oh, that's that little moment. And then get back to sewing. So I think it'll be fun. It'll be handy. All right. So basically, I start with the side seam to side seam. I pull it taut. And I'm going to put some pins along the hem edge just to make sure that this is perfectly mirrored. Um, guys, I also have going right now, I'm going to do a virtual, like a virtual live retreat this fall. For those of you who have wanted to do retreats, but cannot afford like the lodging, travel, and time off work. I'm going to do a virtual retreat with a capped attendance where you can still the whole same experience. Like I'm going to be walking you through my entire sewing studio live and um, we're all going to sign NDAs so we can all talk about money, um, you know, all the things and not have to worry about like, oh, what if this person steals my business plan or doxes me online or whatever. We won't have to worry about that. We'll all sign NDAs so we can talk openly. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't just get out on the internet and talk about the details about the money that I make and, you know, all that. So we'll do that. Um, I'm kind of collecting a email list right now for the information. So the sign up is not live yet, but I'm collecting email list for that. So if you want to be on the inside track of hearing about it, um, it is going to be held the week after the USA Thanksgiving. So it's the last week of November going into December. It's that Monday through Friday. Um, go to my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com and click on the button. It's there on the home page. Click on the button to receive information about attending the virtual retreat. I'm saying virtual and live because there's going to be live elements to it like this, right? Um, I'm going to be doing um, live model fittings with brides, so that's awesome. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have the bride um, standing there, 
and I'm going to go through the appointment as I would just to, you know, her and her guests out in the public and just say everything I would say. But I'm going to stop at different times throughout the appointment and then turn to the camera and say, but this is what I'm thinking, okay? That way you don't just hear me say, okay, I think your alterations are going to be $500 and we're probably going to see you three times. Okay, that's what the client would hear, right? I'm going to stop and turn to you guys and say, and of course, you'll have my face. <gasps> my face will be included in the virtual retreat. But I'm going to turn to you guys and say, okay, these are the things that I'm seeing. This is why I think I'm going to have to have at least three pennies. This is, you know, I'm thinking this is going to take this long. It's going to take that long. This is how I'm coming up with this number, you know, whatever. So, um... That way you can kind of get, you get the fly on the wall experience, but you also get my whole like stream of consciousness experience, if that makes sense. I think that segment of the virtual retreat will actually be one of the most valuable segments is running the appointments, how I actually run my shop and run the appointments. All right. So this girl, remember, she's like a middle of the road price. So I'm probably not going to do the rolled hem with the straight stitch. It's, it's going to be the serged rolled hem. And she wants her hem one inch longer than what was marked. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting one inch longer. I'm not going to worry about a hem allowance because um, this is the innermost layer anyways. The outermost layers are going to be longer. And somebody moved my shears yesterday. I'll be right back. Let me take those out. And... Oh, some. All right, these are huge. <laughs> I found some big ones. These actually work really good, but they hurt my wrist. I'm having a problem right now with um, tendonitis. All right, let's see. Let me check the comments before I go find the shears that I want. Irene, hand stitching again at the moment. That's awesome. All right, all these thumbs up. Nice. All right, let's see. Tanisha, you're making your own wedding dress. Awesome. Let's see. Rosalie, I cannot wait to see your wedding dress. That's exciting. Let's see. All right, let me go look for the shears. Be right back. All right, here's a pair. They're still monstrous, <laughs> but they're um, they're not as heavy as those other ones. All right, so I'm just gonna do this. And then, oh my goodness, I've wanted to do a video on this for so long. I can do a short about this. Maybe I can pull a short out. But anyways, when I'm cutting like this, I do this thing, call it my laser eye. All right, so obviously I'm tracking like this for my inch down, but I'm actually gauging more along my hem edge for how I'm cutting. It's like my eyes bounce back and forth between the two while I'm cutting. So I know a lot of people will actually take a gauge and measure and mark, and that's fine. Um, I did used to do it that way, but now what I do is I use these marks for my accuracy for the length, and but I find following the hem edge is what gives me that smoothness. Like if, if I only looked at these, it, it tends to be a little more choppy and wobbly than if I, if I use like, picture like a making a laser with your eyes like this while you're cutting, like a bracket kind of thing. If I, if I do that and let these just correct the length of that, the width of that bracket as I go, I cut so much more smoothly. Let me know in the comments if that made sense. That's a little abstract, okay? But, you know, we're creatives and I feel like our thinking is abstract, right? It's, it's kind of hard to articulate, so. Anyways, here we go. Can you picture my laser eye going like this? 
These are off. <laughs> hey, I never promised that I wasn't going to be a weirdo. It's like that, uh, that old song. How old is that song? Who sang that? I beg you of pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. You know that song. I need to say that. I beg your pardon. I never promised you sanity. Alright. This kind of came off track a little bit. So I'm going to split the two. That. That. Keep going. With reducing this footprint. Alright. So here I am. This is my goal. Really kind of rounding out. Making it more of a rounded exit here. I do usually split at the end. Sometimes I do it together and correct it, but most of the split. All right, there we go. We got the pongee layer cut. And then we're going to cut the tool layer. that. Now I'm going to pull this tool layer down and we're going to cut the two layers that are closest to the pongee. So we're going to flip the outermost two layers out of the way. This girl could get involved and accidentally get snipped, right? That is not what we want to do. We've got to get her out of the danger zone. center front. Now we got to the side seam here. And we're going to mirror pin again at that edge. People say, oh, how do you get your pin so, how do you get your hem so even? Well, mirror pinning. I do have a video on this. Where would I be without me or anything? I don't even know. And yes, sometimes the hems coming from the manufacturer are so crooked that you have to kind of correct the hem. And that's fine. That's just, that's just life, isn't it? Isn't it a joke when people are like, oh, that was not like that when we picked it up. It was perfect from the manufacturer. Like, <laughs> let me pick myself up off the floor laughing there, please. It is a hot mess express coming from the manufacturer a lot of times. Especially right now with manufacturing. Manufacturing is shook up all over the world right now. We had COVID and then we have this horrible thing going on with Ukraine, which they had wedding gown manufacturers there. All right, so I'm going to do this. Get these two together. See that they are about the same length, so I'm going to put one in between because it was just too far of a trip, you know, from here to here, so I wanted an extra one. All right, so got that. Go in here. I promise I'll check your comments in a minute. Leave me a comment. If you've got a comment or a question in the chat, I'll go back through and look. So like I was saying earlier, we are now going to have channel memberships. So you guys can do um, different levels. You can get emojis. You can get um, a level to where when I'm doing a live, um, and you 
put in a comment on the chat. It doesn't matter if there's 400 other people commenting. If you are a certain membership level, I'm going to take the time to answer you and talk specifically to you. So that's super cool. I do like that um, with other um, creators on YouTube. I really like attending their live streams and being able to get answers to questions. I think it's awesome. But in the meantime, we don't have a lot of people on here because this is my first one. I'm just working out the glitches. And because of that, if you have a question or a comment, I'm definitely going to see it today. So take advantage of being an early adopter, right? Of this, of this new feature. All right, awesome. So I'm just going back through, checking that I need to do one more pin here. Don't forget um, the virtual retreat that I was talking about. We will also have small breakout sessions uh, on Zoom where we will chat. And again, that'll be face-to-face. -face. I'll actually have my face on there. That'll be more, a uh, little bit more personal business kind of stuff going on there. So I would like for our Zoom chats to only have like maximum if I can a maximum of five people on the zoom at a time so that way you guys get the individual attention that you need all right let me look at comments we are about to make it to three I can't believe it I haven't messed something up <laughs> I'm still on here this is crazy all right let's see Delia from Tennessee, my girl. Hello. She's a BST bestie. All right, let's see. Top cat, we are probably still all with you. I started bridal. Oops, wait a minute. Oh, the chats fade so quick. All right. Started bridal and prom sewing this year. My retirement. Right? Wink, wink. Retirement, right? They always say you're busier after you retire. I'm inspired by all your tips and methods. Could not have done it without you. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Greetings from Portugal. Nice. Portugal. Katarina. Spinola. Greetings from Portugal. Working on my wedding dress too. Wedding in two weeks. Love watching your videos and all your tips. Thank you for sharing it. It's so funny, uh, Katarina when I meet people from Portugal or talk to people from Portugal um, with uh, Portuguese. Man, I took like four years of Spanish in school. Portuguese sounds so much like Spanish. Like, I feel like when I hear them talking, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I should understand this. And I'm like, I don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> and then it's, it always takes me a minute. Like, oh my goodness, okay. They're from like Brazil or wherever, you know. So that's funny how that works out. All right, let me see this again. How do you deal with an uneven hem? Bonnie, I just correct the hem first, or I at least pin it in a corrected version. So like if it's like, if I'm pinning the mirror layers and, and they should, you know, be flush like this and one of them has like this wobble coming down, I would just still go ahead and pin it and ignore the wobble. Or I would cut the wobble off and, and pin it. But I correct it like from the waist, you know, how I have this set up where I pull it taut. I correct it like from the waist is what I go by. So, all right, let's see here. Never did near pinning. Tanisha, I'm not understanding that. Never did near pinning. Near pinning. I'm not sure what you meant there. All right, Bonita, after discovering your videos, I've been inspired to do my own alterations on my dress for my son's wedding. Go you, girl. You can do it. It is almost time. Okay, it's 
So I was saying two to three or shorter, right? And I cannot believe my doorbell has not rung because I had my bookkeeper was coming by. But we've got another five minutes on here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this um, an inch longer than what was pinned. That's what she requested. And I'm gonna cut the top two layers as she stands in it probably. Um, so I'm not too worried about those. These cut nice and neat. Oh, that wasn't neat. Look at that. Just go back. That's the other thing about lives. If I make a mistake, you get to watch me correct it. Wait a minute. What am I saying if I make a mistake? <clears throat> when, when I make a mistake, I will go back and correct it. You'll see how I correct it. So, you know that is what this channel is about. It is about reality. And I just am so grossed out by sewing channels slash sewing tutorials that are like this perfect little studio. And they have like a hand model doing the sewing and she has no clue what she's doing. And they take like an hour to iron a napkin, whatever. I'm just not into that. I call it pretty, pretty, perfect. <laughs> I am not into pretty, pretty, perfect. I will show you my mistakes. Oh, see, there's one there. Am I even still in view? I'm going to set up something I can tell now with this little trial run. I'm going to set up something where I can see what I'm doing. I don't know if it's going to be a second phone that's logged in like a viewer or if I'll just put a mirror on behind here where I can see what's going on. But I know I want my rear facing camera doing the work, but I also want to be able to see what's going on on the screen. I guarantee you they have a product for that. I just have to look it up. And then I'm going to taper these out one side at a time. All right. If I had a helper here today, one way to save time is stuff like this. Toss them this and be like, okay, get the pins out of it. Think about all the time that you spend doing stuff like that that could easily be given over to someone else to do. And I get it. People say like, well, I can't hire anybody because nobody has the same level of skill. That's fine, but you can't hire out somebody who changes the toilet paper, who organizes your pins, who gets the pins out of your fabric, who, you know, I just throw all my scraps here that I want to keep. The scraps I want to get rid of go over there in the bin, but scraps that I want to keep, I keep right over here. And my girl was here yesterday. She went through it all. I can have her cut the lace out of certain scraps if the lace is what's valuable, right? So she's the one that did all this. I don't have time. I'm like working on the fly. I don't have time. <laughs> she did all this, picked all this lace out and organized stuff. So don't get discouraged. You really can get help. They don't have to know, they don't even have to know how to sew, but they could save you hours. All right, that was a little notchy spot. But we got to get cleaned up here. Whew, I had a mad customer one time because she could see some little notches in her hem and her mom had to clean the notches out. To us, we know that is not a big deal. But if they get past us and they see it and they're, you know, an intense kind of person like that, it's a big deal to them. So, anyways, it is 2.59. Any last questions, guys? Speak them now. I would love to answer anything. Let's see. Let's see. 
reading the reading the comments here. Oh yes, mirror. That's right, Irene. Mirror pinning. Erin, hello. I just want to say that too. That's awesome. Melody, are you asking me? Me about where my business is located? I do have a blog post. Go to my website, uh, bridalsewingtechniques.com and go to the blog and it, it'll say, where am I? And it gets into retreat information there too. Okay. Katarina, yeah, the languages have similarities. Any tip for inside finishes? It's looking pretty rough on mine. Is it lined? Okay. That would be the thing. Is it lined? Also, Katerina, when I'm sewing for myself and other people aren't going to see the inside, I just don't pour the time into the inside. So if I was selling a garment, I want the inside to be as beautiful and perfect as the outside. If it's a full budget job, um, but if I'm sewing for myself, I just don't worry about it too much because people aren't going to say it. Demetra, I'm glad you caught me live too. I'm excited about this. Yes, girl. Ooh, you've inspired me, Sydney says, to get my munchkin to help with stuff like that when I sew for her. That's right. Put those little ones to work. Put those little ones to work. All right, guys. It has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I really thought it was going to be like two people watching me like mess around with my phone and figure this out, but it worked. We did the whole hour and um, way more of you showed up than what I thought. So this is awesome. I super, super appreciate it. Um, you guys have an awesome day. Don't forget in the future, it's going to be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Thursdays. This is Eastern Standard Time, USA. Okay, right? So um, that's when we're going to be doing the live streams. And um, they might, depending on what I get into them, they might end up being one of the membership things. Or it might just be that your chat shows up more boldly. I, I have not gotten that figured out yet. But we'll see. But 2 to 3 Eastern Standard. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Check out on my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com. On the home page, the information about the virtual retreat coming up this fall. Small, capped size. All right? Intense. Intense. You will probably want to be off work that week because it will be so many hours. I'm going to be here night and day pumping out content that whole week. It will be like attending a retreat, but even more. All right? So... Let me check these last little chats here. I'm not sure. Is it Aria Lynn? Aria Lynn? I'm so afraid I'm going to mess up your name. Miss Vera. Let me just say that. <laughs> just thank you for all your tutorials over the years. Being able to see hiccups as they crop up and hear or see your process for resolving them is incredibly informative. I think so too. Thank you. That's how I felt about it. That's why I did it. So that's nice. All right. Oh, Bonita. My husband is an AV specialist for a large worldwide company. It is his job to set up video connections. Reach out if you have a question he may be able to answer. Thank you so much. If you could, because I think I'm going to lose all these chat things. I think I end up losing it. Um, if you could, can you DM me on Instagram with that? So I can keep track of that. Jacqueline's own. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm super excited. And I'm thank. I'm just thankful you guys came. Irene. Yes. <laughs> thank you for being so brave to try a live chat. Isn't that the truth? It's scary. I'm not techie. You guys have a great day. Okay. Bye.